Welcome to QueenOwn7.com. Please like, subscribe and share my videos. Today we're going to look at the uh, ionic bonding. It's one of the three types of bonding uh, like covalent bonding, metallic bonding and ionic bonding. In ionic bonding, we can look at the name. The name actually tells you exactly that it is a bond between the ions. Uh, in chemistry, we, when we talk about ions, it's a, it's a bond between the positive and negative ions. So ionic bonding is actually uh, between the ions. Now, according to the uh, rule, is negative charge attract the positive charge, like we have done in physics, where you actually have uh, magnets who are actually attracting each other, opposite poles attract each other. So, it, same goes for the uh, ions of opposite charges; they attract each other. So, if you have uh, any two charges, for example, you have potassium, uh, which carry positive one charge and come close to the uh, negative one chloride ion, uh, they will attract each other. And this is not a bond because of sharing of electrons, but it is a bond because they are oppositely charged. So that's why they are called ionic bond. Now let's start it uh, with the first example. In, in GCSE, they're probably going to ask you like a six marker question, which will actually uh, make a huge difference in your understanding. So we're going to go through bullet points and help you to understand each part of that question. So if they say, uh, explain the structure of sodium chloride, you can actually predict it. Sodium and chlor chloride are the two parts, or they can say uh, lithium fluoride or potassium bromide. You can see that that all of the first uh, uh, atoms of this molecule is actually a metal. So a metal and this one is a non-metal. So ionic compounds are actually between, um, between happens between the metals and the non-metals. Uh, when you look at the periodic table, if you want to find out which one is metal and which one is a non-metal, I'm just gonna resolve this problem straight away for you. You look at the periodic table and on the periodic table, you will have group one, two, then you have three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Uh, somewhere there, up to aluminium, all of this group, including group one, they all are metals. And this part, they are non-metals. So a bond between uh, a non-metal and a uh, non-metal and a metal is called ionic bond. Now let's look at the structure of. If this gives you a six marker question, explain the structure of any of the ionic compound. It can be actually uh, calcium oxide as well. It doesn't matter which one they're going to ask you. All you have to do is you need to first of all look at the position. So identify the position of the atoms or the charge on the ions involved in the bonding. That's the first thing. How are you going to do that? You look at the name, you go back onto periodic table. From here I can see sodium Na is actually in group 1. That tells me sodium actually have one electron in the outer shell. Now when you talk about it, you say sodium has a, actually a, a total number of electrons 11, but because it belongs to the first group, it has one electron in the outer shell. So you don't have to draw all the shells, you can just put the last shell there. The electronic configuration is 2, 8, 1. 2 in the first one, 8 in the second, out of 11, and then 1 left. So that will go to the last shell. So all of these uh, atoms in the group 1, the first column, they all end up having one electron in the last shell. Then you will look at that these sodium, because it's a metal, all the metals actually prefer to make positive ions. Plus one, plus two, plus three, it depends how many electrons they have in the outer shell and how easily they can lose those electrons. Now, because it belongs to the first group, it will have one electron in the outer shell, so it will lose one electron. So anything in chemistry lose one electron will become an A plus one ion. So the charge will be plus one. 
Now remember one thing a lot of people are asking me uh, what does this plus one means? Simply we can say it has lost one electron so it is actually plus one charge. The other reason behind it when you talk about this 11 this 11 represents that it has 11 electron and 11 proton. Now after losing one electron because ele electron is negative charge and proton is positive charge in any atom they always are actually in equal number in a stable atom the proton and electrons they are, they are actually in equal number now after losing one electron from the outer shell it will have 10 electrons left that means it will have extra proton so this will have 10 electrons and 11 protons after losing this electron because it has extra one positive charge that's why it carry a uh, plus one charge now, on the other hand, once you have made this, so in six marker question, you will say sodium, uh, sodium atom loses one electron and converted into an A plus one ion. That's one mark. Second, you have chloride, for example. Uh, let's take an example of fluorine. Fluorine belongs to the seventh group here, so that means it has seven electrons in the outer shell. If you represent the electrons by a dot for one, represent the other one by. So this electron will be donated to this because it is the easy for fluorine to gain one electron to make eight. So that you will say that sodium loses one electron, become Na plus one ion. Chlorine gains one electron and becomes CL negative ion. The third mark N A positive ion and chloride ion will attract each other via uh, electro static forces of attraction or you can say opposite charges attract each other number four uh, because it's a bond between the ions so an ionic bond will be formed it will make crystal lattice so that means each sodium positive ion is gathered by six fluoride ion or chloride ion and each fluoride ion is gathered by six chloride uh, sodium ion. So it's like a layer of sodium and chlorine. It's just like a lattice. When you cut the lattice, you will see the layers inside. So it's just same like for um, uh, so ionic compounds as well. That's why they have higher melting point. Uh, in chemistry or physics, when charges move, you they can conduct electricity. So there are two ways. Either you will have electrons moving across a circuit or you will have the ions in the solution which can conduct the electricity. So uh, ionic compounds, ionic compounds do not conduct electricity in solid form okay but they do conduct electricity conduct electricity in molten or in the solution form when you make a crystal the particles sodium ion and chloride ion which makes the crystal lattice they can't move so in the solid form they cannot conduct electricity but in the uh, obviously uh, in the molten when they are melted or when they are in the solution form they can conduct electricity so the ionic compounds are actually uh, so you, know, you can take a screenshot and you can actually remember all these steps and you can get a mark you can just change the position you can say lithium fluoride lithium will lose one electron and become a light like, positive ion fluoride will gain that electron because become negative ion all you have to do is to locate the position 
of these atoms in the periodic table and based on that you can actually look at how many electrons they have lost if it's, if it's a group one they will lose one electron if they group two like calcium they will lose two electron oxygen belongs to six group so it will gain two electron so you can say calcium will lose two electron become calcium two plus ion and oxygen will gain those two electron become oxygen negative two ion and hence it will make a an iron bond next video i will upload about the uh, covalent bonding and metallic bonding. Thank you. Bye-bye.